Okay? Right now we're going to have words of enlightenment. Words of enlightenment by Minister Crystal Lee. So let's give her a warm welcome of praise. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good? Awesome. I love being anywhere the presence of the Lord is. Is that right? Yes. All right. Well, I want to, of course, thank the, the pastor, my Uncle Steve, <laughs> and, and First Lady for inviting you know me to come out and to, to just be able to worship with y'all. And uh, I, I, I consider every time we're able to speak a humbling experience because the Lord chooses his vessels. We don't choose what the Lord chooses us for. It's just our job to walk in it. And I just thank God I don't have to curve out my future. I don't have to meditate on what his next step is going to be and try to make it for him. I just say, Lord, I trust your will. You know, and I, you know, I say Yahshua says it best when he said it. He said, Lord, if this can be removed from me, then take it from me. But not my will be done, but your will be done. And if he was willing to lay his plans down, surely I can lay my plans down. Because I know mine couldn't have been better than whatever he would have had in his mind to do. <laughs> but it still wasn't what the father wanted. And I tell you that uh, when Pastor told us to preach on this, I was like, ooh, you sure? <laughs> you sure that's what the Lord wants? And, you know, as the week went on, I was like, wow, this is so, this is it's so time sensitive. And, you know, one thing about when the Lord is moving, it doesn't matter what state you're in, everybody's on the same page. And that's how you recognize the church. You don't have to be in the same denomination. You don't have to be following the same woman or man of God. You don't have to watch television to, to catch it. <laughs> if you are in the faith, then the Lord will touch you and you will hear it. And not only will you hear it one time, but you will hear it at least three times. And then it's up for you to say, okay, Lord, I hear you. You know, because when... Elijah was called. He kept saying, who called? Who's calling me? Who called me? Surely you called Samuel. Excuse me. Samuel kept saying, somebody called me. Elijah, I know you're playing games. Go play with me like this. I'm trying to go to sleep. I keep hearing things. And he said, it's not me that called you. I'm not calling you. And he did it three times. And on the third time, he said, the next, on the second time, he said, the next time he called you, you better say, here I am, Lord. Because trust me, it's not me. <laughs> and I tell you, if the Lord is calling you, don't ignore his voice. Because you never know when he say, okay, I'll wait. And waiting could be 40 years for the Lord. Don't y'all know that? <laughs> 40 years. And some of us won't make it to 40 years. Some of us die in the midst of our sins. Some of us never realized that we had a reprobate mind until we died. You know, we laugh at the son that had to get into the pig pen, but thank God he got there. Because if he never got there, he would have never had the heart, the mind to say, wait a minute. <laughs> Didn't, didn't, my dad, didn't my dad tell me he loves me? Didn't my dad tell me if I ever needed him that he'll never leave me nor forsake me? So why am I sitting up here acting like I'm alone? And I'm lonely. And I'm a victim. And I'm all of these things. But you decided to walk all the path that you've taken. And now you got to be big and bad enough to walk back around and say, Lord, forgive me. I repent for my sins. Not only do I repent, but I turn away from what I've done. And I'm here to serve you. You can't say you repent because you say you're sorry. Saying you're sorry ain't repentance. You know, a lot of people say, oh, Lord, Lord, you know what I've done. You know my heart, God. You know my heart. I mean well, I really do. And uh, because I mean well, I'm gonna tell you what I think you want me to say. I think you want me to tell you I'm sorry and I never do it again. And so that's what I'm gonna say. But is it in spirit and is it in truth? Because you can't lie to me. I know all things. I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you before you were born. I ordained you for a purpose. I had a conversation with someone and I told them about predestination. I said it might sound you know, cliche. Because when you hear predestination, you say, oh, that don't seem fair. But what if I told you his eyes, his height was so high, he can see your beginning, your future, and your end, and know where you're going to be eternally, and he don't have to wait for you to finish your life. The Lord said, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. It didn't take him long to figure that out. We didn't even know why he hated Esau. When he said it, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> Did I miss something? Is there a chapter? It's like three chapters. It's got to be some chapters missing up in here. But it didn't take him long. He said there are vessels of honor and dishonor. He never said that you couldn't be a vessel. 
See, in our society, we got people believing, oh, I can be my own God. I don't got to serve you. I don't got to serve Satan. I'm going to serve me. Oh, but you forgot, honey, you flesh. So you either going to serve the spirit or you going to serve the flesh. And there are only, there's really only one king. But there is two people that are fighting for dominion. And the one already won it. So he's just letting you play out your choice. See, we forget that the devil already lost. Not only has he lost, but all of the fallen angels have already lost. So you think they care about your salvation? They don't care about your salvation. They mad because they ain't got a second chance. See, in our lifetimes, we not only got second, but the Bible says 77 times 7, well, I forgive you for one thing. One thing. I know people that say, man, if they do that again, they ain't never going to be my friend. Thank God the Lord ain't like you. I don't want to be your, I don't want to be your friend either. <laughs> you harsh. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm like messed up. I'm going to just stay away from you. <laughs> you. I don't know. You just meant to. <laughs> you know, you got people like that in your life. It ain't just me. <laughs> oh, the Lord laid in my heart, though. He said, Crystal, if I were to take a snapshot of today's modern society, what would it tell you about you? What would it tell you about your church? What would it tell you about my body? What would it tell you about your world? Would it look the way I told you to be? You know, according to my scripture, I said that you ought to be a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. You're supposed to be set apart for me. The Bible says we ought to be ready in and out of season to give an account for who he is and what he has done for us. But some of us, if they catch us on the wrong day, do we have a word? Man, if you would have just called me yesterday. <laughs> I was full of the spirit yesterday. But she done caught me today. So, <laughs> the Bible says we have to renew our minds daily. You don't renew it yesterday and think you're good for the rest of your life. I know me and my mom was having a conversation and, you know, there's this cliche going on. And I love this chapter because it's talking about all of the worldly concepts that fizzle their way into the church and got you believing that worldly wisdom is godly wisdom. Like once saved, always saved. Who told you that? <laughs> if that were the truth, what happened to Saul? I ain't talking about Saul that became Paul because he got redeemed. I'm talking about the one that didn't get redeemed. When Saul was king, the Lord said, I have given you more because more is requested of you. Not only did he do it for Saul, he did it for Moses. He did it for, he does it for you too. And when he anoints you to do something and then you give him an excuse, he eliminates your excuses. You know, with Moses, Moses said, Lord, I can't speak. I got a stuttering problem. Nobody's going to listen to me. He said, all right, fine. You want to pick somebody to speak for, you know, speak for you. They're not going to speak for me. You want to speak for me. And then you can tell them, and then they'll speak for you. And so he picked Aaron. Aaron was the mouthpiece for Moses. But he said, you, Moses, are going to be God to him. I said, oh, wait a minute. Let me make sure I got this right. <laughs> You know, we live in a world where a lot of people got their own gods, and, you know, they think that they pastor is their God, and they think that they minister is their God, and that this person is their God, and that book is their God, and, oh, bishop, he got to be a God. No. <laughs> See, when you are used as a vessel, then the, the God embodies you, and everything you do is ordained by his steps, so when you're walking, yes, you have the power of God. Because you can have a form of godliness and no power. So you can go out here and sing and tap and crop a lie and all these other things that people are trying to do, and it ain't going to have no power. You'll tell people stuff will happen, it won't happen. But they will be too embarrassed to come and confront you because the church will tell you don't say nothing to them. I've seen, I've, I've seen it, I've heard it, and I know it. And, and that's what this is talking about. The people that are practicing religion because they think it's of God, because they have no anointing, they have no power, they're like Saul and it has left them, so they're looking to leech off people like you and I who have the healing power, the anointing power, and guess what, they write in their books, they write in their sermons, and they could preach for them, they would, but see, a lot of the people that are preaching to us are actors. They're actors. They're imitators. See, that's all the devil can do. He cannot create. He is not a creator. He is only an imitator, and he, he manipulates anything that the Lord creates because he can't create it. He can only manipulate it, which means he has to recognize what you are to try to manipulate you. So if, if you stand for nothing, then he has no interest in you. Isn't that funny? 
The moment he gets a hold of you and molds your life, he no longer wants you and he looks for you to fall because the devil has no friends. You see, people think the devil loves me. Ain't it funny? Even devil worshipers won't love in their life and they can't get it. They get married, ain't love in their marriage. They have children, their children hate them. They have businesses, nobody want to work for them. As soon as a new job comes, they're gone. Their turnover is ridiculous. You know, the Bible says, I will give unto them what they have brought upon themselves. Take a look at what's happening. You've got people that are killing off other people legally, aborting children. You think that ain't going to come back on you? You think people who are, all people whose wombs are never going to open is just because they have bad luck? Uh-uh. There are some people, seeds, who will never touch the face of the earth, and when they're born, they are instantly killed for their own benefit. Not because the Lord wants to hurt the child, but because of the parent. Some of these parents, the Lord said, you're not worthy. Only thing I'm going to give you is the son of your father. Yeshua said, Jesus said, if you knew my father, you would know who I am. You would love the fact that I stand for truth, but because you reject the truth, you reject the father, and you are not of the father. And if you're not of the father, then you are of your father. And if you are your father, then you are of the devil. Wait a minute. You can't be of yourself. He didn't say you are of you. He said you are his father or you're in opposition of his father. And if you're in opposition of his father, then there is only one you can serve and that is Satan. That's it. There is no middle ground. People like to say, oh, you know, I like the gray area. No such thing, honey. No such thing. You either over here or you're not. You either love the Lord or you don't. And if you don't, you're with everybody else. The Bible didn't say, oh, if you, if you love me, we're going to set you off in denominations. The devil is a liar. Paul said, who has bewitched you? Who has given you a new gospel? Who told you that your denomination is the only one that's going to get to heaven? Really? Really? So the rest of us that know the Lord, we just playing, we just playing church. Is that what that is? <laughs> that's what that is. Okay. That's new. All right. Okay. I guess first fair thing. You know, the Lord said... What would that picture show you? And I said, Lord, that's an awesome question. And he said, uh, ask, just ask a few questions. I said, okay, I'll ask a few questions. He said, uh, how many people you know in the church that, are, that would kill themselves to go to Beyonce's concert? You know, how many of them go? None of them? Two of them? Some of them? Most of them? All of them? He said, how many of them date according to Godly principles? How many of them really believe that that's necessary? How many of them really believe that what the Lord said about dating is true? Or how many of them say, oh, I don't know, Lord. I gotta, it's like a car. I got to try it. I got to test drive it before I can know that it's going to drive me somewhere. Really? Really? You got to test drive people too? Okay. And then the Lord said, uh, what about marriages? Is your marriage safeguarded because you know the most high and, and other people don't? Are marriages with God in it more better off than those that claim to be atheists? Are they happier than you? Joyful than you? Peaceful than you? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Is it? Is it? <laughs> then the Bible says, what about your children? Do you raise your children to know the word? If your children have a problem, do they know that God can solve it? Or do they think, oh, I gotta go to a doctor. Oh, I need a psychologist. Oh, I need a counselor. Oh, I need, oh, I need. And they all end up needing people. They don't go to God for nothing. They go to people. They Google. Oh, I have a question. Google in it. Google knows all of me. <laughs> Google is God. <laughs> to some people, Google is it. Social media, if you don't know something, I'll go on Facebook. You figure it out. News is on Facebook. <laughs> if you look at our businesses, how many of us can say that our businesses exemplify a godly standard? You know, how many of us can say, oh, yeah, we hire and fire according to the Bible? We really do. We, we don't really, you know, look at what the world looks at. We look at the heart of the person. You know, we're real focused on that. We pray about everything and worry about it. And that leads me to the last question he put in my spirit. He said, Crystal, how many people pray about everything and truly worry about nothing? He said, I tell you, look at their stress level, and I can tell you who's worrying about everything and who ain't. I said, you got a point there. He said, they eat well. They know how to, you know, get their water pH together. People know to put lemons and stuff when they go to the restaurants and stuff. He said, and yet they still don't know how to manage their real problem. It's not what you eat. The Bible says, blessed and eat it. Yeah. When you ain't got no choice and that's all you can afford, you do what you got to do. And the Lord will take care of the rest. But when you stress it about stuff that the Lord can take care of, it's like, I don't need that part for you. 
I need you to do this for me. You see, the reason why many of us can honestly say no to all of those questions except the first one. Everybody can know somebody who went to a Beyonce concert, love Beyonce, will kill over for Beyonce, and Beyonce is not who you think she is. In fact, she says who she is. You see, we have a tendency as a church to think, oh, a little saying, she, she just, you know, she a little confused, you know, but the baby's going to be okay. She's going to go to heaven. You know, when people die, everybody wants the funeral to say that their son or their daughter is going to heaven, and you know they was not living a life. You know they wasn't. Now, do you pray that they could have gotten it right? Yeah, because you don't know the last moment. But what you do know is there are people coming to that grave site that's living the same life, and they believe the same prayer is going to be prayed over them, and they're going to have the same ending, which is to get into heaven, and they did not accept the gift of salvation. And I tell you, it is the, it is the deepest lie that runs thick, especially in the black community. There are too many deaths in the minority areas for people not to take those opportunities to really tell people the truth about everlasting life because it is not that. So then you get to the people that are honest about themselves. You know, the devil has to expose himself. He gets no glory if he's not exposed, you know. If, you, if he stays hidden, then where's his glory? But if he can hide Christ, then he's all the way happy because that leaves room for him to be any and everything he want to be. And yes, that's even in the church. You see, in Ezekiel, he was talking about not only was he ministering about the lay people, he felt sorry for them. He said, you know, y'all preaching, y'all taking advantage of the poor, y'all oppressing them, y'all giving them stuff they can't do. He said, not only are they coming in here one way, the Bible says in the New Testament, you made them twice the devil that they came in as. Shame on you. And who is Ezekiel talking about? The Lord wasn't expecting the people to, to have somebody. He was expecting the leadership to be right. The leadership failed. The leadership was seduced. The leadership gave up on God. The leadership took on worldly principles once they don't wait saved. They preaching that. And then now the people going around, oh, once I give my life to Christ, I'm always going to be good. I don't got to go back to church. I don't got to read my Bible. I'm, I'm good, Lord. You see my birth? You see it? I got my, I got my certificate. They signed it. So I'm going to heaven. I literally had people <laughs> tell me that. I said, really? Okay. It was just a piece of paper contract. That's all you needed. I said, okay, well, that's new. Because the last time I checked, when you give your life to Christ, it costs you your life. If it only costs you a piece of paper, then, hey, I can see why marriage is good for homosexuals. Just a piece of paper, right? It ain't got no covenant to it. It ain't got no promise to it. It's just an arrangement. Right? You got bishops now that are open lesbians and a bishop. I said, uh, did he add something? But did it say in, in uh, Revelation, if you add anything to my book, cursed is that man? So what y'all doing? <laughs> what y'all really doing? <laughs> y'all talking about this is okay now? Homosexuals got their own churches now, and, and everybody is going ahead. And now you got, I remember I was in seminary getting my master's degree in. There was a, I don't know if I say it, well, hey, it is what it is. Then there was a, a couple of people's names that was coming up, and I'm a researcher. I believe in research. The Bible says study to show thyself approved. So if I'm going to be going around quoting people and, and quoting anything, then I need to make sure they quote for real what is really happening, or I'm not going to quote them no more. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If I stop following Christ, don't follow me. I said, you know what? You got a good point. I like that. And I've gotten into several, not me arguing. I don't have to defend myself. The world, the word can defend itself. I'm just supposed to speak it. So I speak it, and you give, you get crazy. <laughs> I'm like, whoa! Look at your little demon coming out. You know you need to sit down. You can't touch this. You know that. You can choose to be a vessel of dishonor, but that's not what's going to happen to me for me in my house. Because me in my house is going to serve the Lord. So if you want to bring that mess over here, then you will have a problem. And, and what I like about, you know, what the Lord has done and, and is doing is he was showing me how in business, you know, the Bible says to serve a brother and sister in Christ better than you would serve a person in the world. And what I have found to be true is the opposite. You know, you got, you got believers crushing other believers. You got pastors crushing ministers because they see it on them. And they're like, oh, if he get out and the church is going to dethrone me, so I need to keep them back here, and I'll make them closer to me, not so that they can learn from me, so I can watch them. 
Because if they leave my church, then I gotta compete with them and I can't win because they got something that I don't have. And so you got a lot of people doing what the world does. See, the world does that. The world try to close out businesses before they have the opportunity to make it because the easiest time to kill off a small business is in the first five years. So if I kill you in the first five years, I don't have to worry about my next 30 years because I safeguarded it in five. So now you got the church operating like the world. The church is operating like a business. One of the biggest businesses that ever was created by the church is media. Televangelism was one of the biggest businesses that started a whole lot of mess, by the way, in its progress. What you find is when media first started, over $800 million was earned annually, annually, by, by churches buying airtime. And who made that money? Who benefited from those dollars? The NBC writes people checks. The ABC say, oh man, I made $800 million, so I'm going to donate $10 million, $8 million. I'm going to give away $8 million. Did, did he come to your church? You know what $8 million could have done to the body of Christ that we gave away? Not for one year, not two years, like 50 years. <laughs> And not only do you find that the, that the industry profited off of that, you don't see any of the agencies of record giving any money away either. Many of y'all don't know what an agency of record is, but an agency of record is equivalent to a real estate broker for the real estate industry. They are the ones that negotiate contracts for ministries to buy airtime. Those people ain't write no checks either. They make money. They got 10% off of that $800 million at least, which means they account for $80 million a year. I didn't see any of that do what the Lord says it was supposed to do. You know, when you, when you go back to Acts and you see what they were doing, you see them giving to the orphans, taking care of widows, providing for those less fortunate, rebuilding areas, giving people hope and inspiration, and you turn on most of these faith channels and all you can hear about is money. Give your money and we will pray for you. Give your money and we will give you a prayer cloth. Give your money and we will send you special oil. Last time I checked, isn't the Lord that anoint oil? Yeah, yeah. Can't I just go buy what I can afford? And, uh, and had a Lord anointed for me? And ain't that good? You can do that with food stamps. You do not have to send <laughs> your money <laughs> to... You know, the Catholic Church call these things relics. But we don't like to say relics because that sounds really demonic. So we're going to call it gifts. If you, <laughs> if you give me your money, I'm going to give you a gift to tell you thank you. But what you really bought was this here cross. Yeah. Because this was the cross that Yeshua died on. And every time you rub on it, you gonna get a blessing. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, we just made a new idol for the, ch the church. That's what we did. We're making idols for the church. I, had a, I heard a pastor one time preach on the concept of, of the cross. And he said, um, if this was all right with God, shouldn't all black people walk around with nooses on their necks? So they can remember slavery and remember how the Lord has brought you through? Would you pick a noose to do that? So why would you pick a cross to represent the glory of the Lord? Why not a lamb? Why not a lion? Why not a dove? Why not what the Lord picked? Why would you pick what the world picked? The Bible said, cursed is a man that hangeth upon a tree. But you take a tree and make a trinket and call it a blessing? Ain't that what Saul did? <laughs> Samuel said, Saul, what have you done? Oh, I ain't did nothing. I ain't did nothing. Come on, bro. You can't lie to me. You know I can hear from the Lord, right? Come on, let's just let's be straight with me. It's your last chance. I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to hold back. You don't say nothing. Can't really help you, brother. Man, I ain't do nothing. It was all of the people. The people did it. I ain't do it. I promise I ain't do it. All I was trying to do was do what the Lord needed me to do because I needed to bring gold back put it back in the temple. Oh. So the Lord needed you to think for him. The Lord needed you to decide what was best for him. 
He needed you to be disobedient so he could forgive you later because you knew better than he knew. Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling me? See, that's what we're saying when we say, oh, no, I'm not a woman, I'm a man. Oh, no, no, I'm not a man. I was meant to be a woman. You just don't understand. Oh, no, no, you don't understand. You see, in our lives, we have allowed the world to penetrate the church. You see, the first sign that we had that the church was being infiltrated was when Medea came out. Oh, many of us had the plays. I know we all got into Medea. We was like, yeah, y'all, we young, we all good. We, we got us some play, y'all. We got to go to watch and support Tyler Perry. Oh, yeah, shut up now. That's what we was doing. And then we went to the play. We was like, whoa. We're Tyler Perry. <laughs> You're there, you're looking for a brother. You're like, okay, is he gonna come out? Maybe he's gonna come out in the next act. After the break, he's gonna come up. And then at the end, you're like, wait a minute. Did he come out and tell you thank you? You was in the play? <laughs> I've seen you. And then after a while, people was like, oh, so you're the woman. Do you know that Tyler Perry, for every movie he makes that has nothing to do with Medea, he has to make eight movies on Medea. That's his contract with Lionsgate. Like every time you a man, I need you to be eight times the lady. Oh, and you tell me he ain't got a plan for the church. Because who is Medea for? The church. You see, if you accept Medea, you accept transgender. You accept homosexuality. You accept cross-dressing. The Bible says in the Old Testament that a man ought not take on the image of a woman. And a woman ought not take on the image of a man. That don't mean we can't wear pants, though, y'all. You still wear pants, because that ain't got nothing to do with being a man. <laughs> There's some churches that take a little too far. You can't wear pants. What you mean? Oh, I can't wear a skirt every day. This is disrespectful. But uh, <laughs> it's hard to go to work in skirts all the time. If I got to <laughs> you need to break out in a woman. You can't be doing all this stuff. <laughs> you need some sweat at some point. You can't work out like this. This is, this is sexist. So, you know, you got some people that, that do some extra stuff, but the but the, the concept was there. You see, when you open up Medea, then you open up a can of worms. Because then, the same people that are willing to bid for Medea are bending for Halloween. Oh, my children can go, it's just candy. Really? Really? Have you researched this at all? <laughs> Last time I checked, it was the day of the dead. It was the day when most Satanists are active. It was the day when many, there is, my sister was Googling stuff on Halloween, <laughs> and she said they were selling underwear that had some kind of aroma that was meant to make men turn homosexual, at least while they wore the underwear. I said, what is this? I never heard nothing like this before. <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> but we say it's harmless. Oh, it's harmless. It's not harmless, y'all. We say the Easter Bunny. Oh, the bunny is sweet. He just a reminder of resurrection, son. But I see no rabbit anywhere in the Bible. They, were, <laughs> they weren't used to talk. They wasn't used to walk. They didn't, you know, he used a donkey. I remember that. He used a fish, a whale. I remember that. You know, uh, but I don't call no bunnies hopping through the Bible. <laughs> but yet they hop through the church. We have Easter egg hunts. We promote Easter morning. We promote Resurrection Sunday. Come for Easter Sunday. What in the world does Easter got to do with Resurrection Sunday? If you ain't never heard of Resurrection Sunday, you wouldn't even know it was about Christ. You would think it's about a bunny with some eggs in a basket and what? More candy. That's how your, your kids know holidays. Candy. Toys. Because here come Christmas. Oh. Now what's the problem with Christmas? Oh, honey, let me tell you. You see, the world will have you believe in a lot of things about Christmas. But a lot of things about Christmas is very, very pagan. Very pagan. And demonic. You see, Christmas was founded because they couldn't control people. And on Christmas, people were going around killing folks. It was the purge that we can see in the movies today. They were doing it. And so they said, oh, we got to do something. For all of the believers out there, Let's give them their God. Let's do more with this God because this God seems to have a better grip than our gods. Because Saturn, that's his birthday. They gave Christ Saturn's birthday. And we out here 
Jesus, it's your birthday. Santa Claus coming on the sleigh. Where's Santa Claus coming at in the way? <laughs> now we met him searching for new stuff. He a new character that just came on the scene. He more famous than Christ. I know Santa, everybody knows Santa Claus. I remember when I was in school, I told people Santa wasn't real. You know, they called my mom. <laughs> they said, um, Miss Yolanda, uh, Crystal's up here telling all the little kids that um, Santa's not real and the tooth fairy isn't, isn't real and now she's on the Easter Bunny. I think you need to come up here. And she said, oh, well, she's just telling the truth. That's just Crystal. <laughs> she'll be all right. <laughs> if y'all don't, y'all don't like lying to y'all children, just go on and tell them the truth and they'll be all right. They won't be shocked when they hear the truth. But how many of us are really telling our children the truth? You know, not only is the world lying to their children, but we lying to our own children. We telling them, Lord, we don't want to raise them in the word because then what about their own choice? What about their choice? <laughs> Do you know you were shaped in iniquity? You weren't born in righteousness. You got you to gotta get there. I got to show you how to get there. But if I'm going to let you sit in iniquity, then it's my fault I didn't raise you right. And then when you're old enough, I can't teach you nothing because you're 30. And then I'm wondering why all my kids are in jail, homeless, this and that and everything. And the devil just ransacked my house. I got God for nobody else. You are a useless vessel. You buried your coin in the ground. You got my word and you buried it like a little nasty servant. What do I need with you? So you are worse than an infidel. That's what the Lord says. You worse than an infidel. You talk about all these, these men that lead their babies and women that lead their kids, and you sitting there and ain't giving them nothing anyway. Maybe it's better you wasn't around. See, sometimes your blessing is you being with somebody else. See, a lot of people say, oh, my mama gave me away, oh, my daddy gave me away, but no, honey, your father always was with you. It's just that person wasn't what you needed right now. So I had to put you where I needed you to be so I can mold you to what I want you to be. Is that okay with you? Can I ensure that you come up the way I want you to? Or do I have to do it your way? You see, Joseph was mad. He said, oh, I'm so, this ain't my dreams, God. This ain't what you showed me. You told me people's going to bow down to me, and I was going to be cool, and all my brothers going to respect me. And I looked at myself, and I couldn't see how that was possible. I was the second youngest, and all of these things, my mama is dead. All oh, they got their mamas. No, they, they're all alive. They're chilling. And here I am in a jail. I got sold into slavery. My coat is gone. The man I was loyal to is now considering me unfaithful because his wife nasty. And then when I try to tell him on her, then he believe her, which I do understand. But man, it is kind of messed up. Then I get put here. I help a man out with his dream. He goes back to the Pharaoh. The other one I told was going to die. He couldn't help me anyway. But the one that got appointed forgot about me. And here I sit, waiting. You see, but if he didn't have the heart that the Lord wanted for him, he was never going to be ready for where he was going. So in that time, the Lord was able to mold and have his undivided attention. Some of us feel like sending our kids to jail was the worst thing that could happen to them. I tell you, it is not. If it was the worst thing that could happen to them, surely Joseph would have never went to jail. Paul would have never went to jail. <laughs> so many of the disciples went to jail. But the miracles was found in the jail. They found him. He, they heard him. You see, the world keeps us busy. I love what one of my uh, friends said. He said, uh, busy is being under Satan's yoke. Many of us are busy under Satan's yoke. We're not. The Bible talks about in Revelation how the churches were busy, but nothing was profitable out of them because they had no love. If you have a marriage without love, if you have kids without love, if you do your job without love, if you do ministry without love, you have nothing. The Bible says you can do anything you want to, but if you have not charity, you have nothing. Charity is love. And the Bible says that the Lord is love. God is love. So if he's love, he got to be in everything you do. And that's how come when people encounter you, they're supposed to encounter Christ. I remember when I first started um, acting when I was, I was young. I think I was in middle school. And the lady doing my hair to do the headshots and whatnot, she said, um, you're a Christian, aren't you? I said, how do you know that, girl? She said, I can just see it. And this was a white woman who I don't know if she was saved or unsaved or whatever, but she knew there was something different about me compared to the people that she works with day in and day out. Is that true about you? Is it true about you? 
Can the Lord call on you? Or are you like the people in Ezekiel where when he looked, he found no one? He found no one. He found no one to stand in the gap to turn his wrath from these people, and they all suffered because there was not one. But the Bible says, I will not leave you comfortless. And because I won't leave you comfortless, I'm going to send you a comforter. So he sent his son to die for all of us, to redeem us. And then there are some that say it wasn't necessary. That ain't enough. Lord, you need to do more for me. I need a house. I need a car. I need a yacht. I need this. And then I'll believe. Honey, if you could do all things, then why were you praying to God in the first place? That is your evidence that you need him. That is your evidence on why he had to, to say forgive them for they know not what they do. They know not what they do. They're asleep. So they need to be woken up. And I will quicken their spirits. And that's what happens when you take the Lord as your Savior and you believe and trust in his word. It's not enough to just profess it and get a sheet of paper. But what you believe, you must be a living sacrifice. You must give your life to Christ. And when you do so, it'll be evident in everything that you do. And yes, you will stand in the gap for somebody else. Thank you so much. And I think that concludes my message.
in the field. My God, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, what we're going to do, hallelujah, is why they got to set up, amen. Hallelujah. You think you're about ready? You know you're about ready? All right. Let's see. The Bible, the Bible, you know, reminds us that we got to be ready in season and out of season. Come on, somebody. And somebody messed around and told me where there's smoke, there's fire. Yes. Come on, somebody. My little niece came up here and, 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 and y'all saw the smoke. Come on, somebody. Yes. But here comes the fire. Yes. Give Miss Yolanda Daya. Come on, somebody. I ain't say I I said, Miss Yolanda Daya, come on, somebody. Give her a warm welcome of praise. Let me so much. Hallelujah. Let God use you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. That, that young lady there, I'm so proud of her. Me too. She make her mama happy. Y'all, 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 y'all. 31 years of school. Come on, 31. I remember when I was pregnant with that girl. And uh, I was an unwed mother. I was, had a divorce from my first husband, my two children, and I met Crystal Dad. And uh, well, we did something, we had no business, and she was on the way. And I prayed a prayer of repentance. And my prayer was this. I don't know why the Lord got all, all off, but we're going to go with it. And I said, Father, you know all things. All things. And one thing that I ask is this. Cause we talk, me and my dad talked about getting an abortion and all this and that. And my mama said, girl, you know good and well you don't believe in abortion. You just don't have to rely on God. Yeah. If he can make it with two, he can make it with three. And tears hit my eyes. And the spirit of the Lord touched you out. And I remember shouting, and this girl in here was. And I didn't understand that at the time. Every time the Lord would touch me, she'd wiggle around. Wiggle around. When Crystal was born, Crystal would do stuff like, Mom, what? Let's play radio. And she wanted to play radio. So she'd be the host. And my other two older kids, they would get in on it. They would do stuff like make me laugh. And they would imitate people at the church shout. <laughs> they would imitate the pastor. And the Lord said, talk. And Crystal was always the preacher. <laughs> and I remember the Holy Spirit said to me one day, he said, now if you got rid of her, you'd have missed all of it. He said, Yolanda, the fruit of the womb is the Lord. He said, whether well, children come by rape, a father, an uncle, a brother, so many ways babies come in the world. They didn't ask to come. But however they come, we are to love them. My grandmama told me, baby, it take a family to raise a baby. She was right. She was right. She was right. And with God, all things are possible. I got five kids, by the way. I had more after her. I got five. Three girls, they all my mamas. And two sons, one in the front, one on the end, and they my daddies. 
And they all tell me what I can and cannot do. That's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I ain't mad at them. <laughs> the Lord pertaining to his word. Love you, baby. So proud of you. And the Lord brought me to 26, mm -hmm. and I'm going to start here in 26. And it says, her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they shown any difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean. And they hid their eyes from my Sabbath. And I am profane among them. You may read. We're going to start with 26. Okay, Dad, what are we going to do? He said, we're going to talk about violation of the law. Priests are a representation of the ministries that go on in the body of Christ. Your pastors, your deacons, your reverends, your ministers, your helps, your governments, etc., etc. God uses these, these seats in order to bring order into the house. Mm -hmm. Now let's take it to the world, which is so parallel to the spiritual world. I mean the natural world, I'm sorry. Here, if you break a law, you get arrested. Mm -hmm. You go to jail. Mm -hmm. And if you pack it, you can give the authority the right to shoot you. Mm -hmm. And they don't mind doing it. They'll get with you. But this is the sad part. When the government that God set up goes against God's law, and instead of becoming a law to protect and serve, it becomes one to oppress and violate. So he said, my preachers, my teachers, my evangelists, my bishops, my helps, my government, my police, my politicians, they are all included. He said they have violated my law. The United States of America was born and founded on this book. The Bible says that God loves all he created and he does not have any respecter of persons. But in the Constitution of the United States of America, it says that black people are a third part of a man. They said you know worse than a dog or a monkey. This is a known fact. Today, they're trying to get that changed, but it ain't so easy to change constitutional law. We, the people of the United States of America, the Constitution state, but you are not included in the we. God talks about slavery. And I thought this was deep because I've read some things and, and been, been running, um, praying about some things, and the Lord really been showing me some deep stuff because I wanted to know about the oppression of, of groups and generations of people. I wanted to know why. 
Because I said, Lord, I am a woman of color. My children are of color. And I refuse to be scared to walk down the street or watch my baby get in the car and go somewhere in the fact that a police gonna just shoot him regularly because he feel like it. But I want to know how do you have protection? How do you come from oppression and depression and all these things that are going on. And, and as I begin to read the word here, I've seen a lot of things going on. A whole lot of things going on. One, he said, my people violated my law. Two, he said, and have profaned my holy things. Profane means to disrespect. You are his holy thing. You are his most prized possession. He loves you with the love so deep and so strong that he wrote this word for you and for I. And anytime we read it, if we read it, and we disrespect it, there's penalties that come behind it. And you become a lawbreaker. When you become a lawbreaker, my daughter said it very well, you allow, my father said today, he said, you, you open your own doors and you take the locks off windows and raise them up. He said, Yolanda, he said, a strange woman tears down her house, but a wise woman builds her house. He said, baby, I don't want you to be scared because your skin is brown. Some say it's black. What I want you to realize is this. You have an enemy, the accuser of the brethren, that knows that he can't attack you unless you violate my law and you open the door for him. And when you do open the door and you don't know what's going on in your life, you better find out what you did because for some reason the thief has come in your house and now that's why all kind of havoc is happening in your life. We don't like to admit that we're responsible for sometimes our own pain and suffering. When I was five when my kids were little, I said, y'all want to go to the store get some candy? Yeah. One condition, clean up that room. <laughs> they go upstairs. My kids was good. She laughing because she know it. They'll take everything, throw it under the bed, throw everything in the closet, yep. close the door. They even got good. They start putting that in the window. I was like, ooh. They had washed the wall. With the print on them mothers. How can you see the vacuum lines? They know what I like. I was like, ooh, the Holy Spirit just said, look under the bed. Yeah. Crystal just started crying. Ooh, because she knew it. I, drew, I got a broom, swept everything from out of there, opened the closet, stuff just fell out the closet. I said, y'all blew it today. No candy today. No candy today. We do the same thing. Amen. Didn't I tell you this, that, and other? Because we quick to tell God what we want. Yeah. I want this, 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 this. We'll name it and claim it. <laughs> you name it, we know it. We, know, we done got program on how to get what we want. Kids do too. That's how they know how to get around it. You know what? We just gonna do this and we forget. Don't ask mama nothing. We gonna go ask daddy. Daddy always say yeah. They know you. They know you. And we try to from because we learn that stuff. We try to do it with God, but it don't work. Amen. Amen. But you know what? My grandma was 
was preaching Bible, she just didn't know it. She just didn't know it. I read about Ahab. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about Ahab in a minute. But 27, I wrote down princes. I looked this up. A princess back in this day was chief men of the state. 1 Kings 20 and 14 says they were governors. Um, they were also lieutenants. So these are men in government. Christ is called the, Mas uh, the Messiah, the prince. The archangel Michael is called a prince in Daniel 12 and 1. These are men or angels who run public affairs and they are appointed to represent the public. So when your city officials are lawbreakers, towards God, if they are in that position, don't expect them to come to your rescue and treat you right. Don't. The Bible tells us to pray for the government. Pray for your president. Pray for your elected fifth officials. Pray for them. Pray and be good. I used to do politics years ago. It ain't no job. It ain't no job. Stuff I say, and I'm like, my God, it ain't no CP all of us pray for. Because there's some crazy stuff I got out of me. It's too much for me. Mm -mm. I got a big mouth. I would tell you. You ain't supposed to be doing that. I seen too much. I seen pastors ride, and the Lord told me some stuff. And I went and said, This said the Lord. And they got mad at me, called me names. Oh, yeah, but you holy though. No, they not. Like I said, they human just like you. Mm -hmm. It's people that put a lot of people on pedestals. Stop supporting bad ministry. Mm -hmm. Stop sending your money because you become a partaker with them. What God say? Lawbreaker. Mm -hmm. Violating my law. He said put your seed in good ground. That's right. If them people ain't good ground, you stop putting your money in it. Because God ain't in it. They up there acting a fool, showing out. And it built a protection around Job and his life and his family. And the only way it could come off was for God to take it off. And it came off because God bragged on Job to the devil. And the devil said, well, if you did all that good stuff to me, I'd bless you too. Maybe God blessing on some of us. Blessing on us to brag on you a little bit. Yeah. Been there. But I said here, 1 and 6 through 10, Satan talks about the hinge of Job being the reason that Job was so loyal and faithful. A challenge on behalf of Job's faithfulness. Job lost it all, even the respect of his wife. When she could have stood in the gap because she knew her God. That woman been with Job all them years. You gonna tell me that you couldn't stand by the man of God for a little while. Standing in the gap, and this is, this is my last, and I'm closing, because we said all of that to say this. The Lord was talking to me earlier this morning about gappers, not gappers. Gappers go tell everybody everything about what's going on in their life. Girl, that girl, she crazy, she did, she doing that, she working there, she doing that. You know what, well, you know, I love my son, I know it ain't right, he's supposed to sell dope, but that boy, he helped me out, that's how I pay my light bill, my car note, and everything, you know. And, and so I know, I know it's wrong, you know, that he's selling dope. She went to, you pacify. There are women out here, mothers, that pacify. Instead of going to God, and this is why the Lord, I know he's talking about the wailing women. Because when something was wrong at home, the women would go before God 
stand in the gap on behalf of their children, their husbands, their friends, their loved ones, regardless of what was happening, and we pray. Nobody, we're talking and gossiping about what's going on with sister and brother so-and-so. We were praying people. And when God said, I looked and saw, I looked to and fro, I was looking to see if I could find somebody. He said, in the land that was staying in the gap. I'm a witness. Sunday morning, if the preacher get a little long wind, then people get upset because they want to go home and eat. Or they want to go watch the Sunday night football. Mm -hmm. You know my time, Pastor. Yes. <laughs> hey, the Bible said, I love uh, Solomon. Solomon said, ain't nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Girl, I got to go. I got to do this. I got to do that. And you know what? It's that stuff that you got to go do. That's why you're going through. That's why your life jacked up. Instead of being a gapper, standing in a gap for your son, standing in a gap for your daughter, your mother, whatever it is. I had some kids came to me and said, I hate my daddy. My daddy did this, my daddy did that. And I listened. Because I learned, to, I learned to do that. And so I listened. I said, now let me ask you one thing. If your daddy died today, how would you feel about that? They weren't expecting that. Mm -hmm. Now you can never talk to him, find out the truth about something you think you know because of stuff you heard while you were growing up, and you didn't get a ch give him a chance to explain himself. How would you feel if somebody did that to you? I said, the Bible says that God is our adversary. He stands in the gap for us. No matter what you do, God is constantly got his son talking to him in his ear about you. Why you can't turn around and give that same service to somebody else? Start with your daddy, the one you hate the most. Because if you can stand in the gap for somebody you don't like, God ain't got a problem with calling on you at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning about somebody you do like. That's right. It's one thing to want to say, yes, Lord, I do it, I go. But it's a whole nother thing when Monday through Saturday you at home and God's, he God checking you out because you said that you would do it. Like he said, I'm looking, I'm seeking, I'm looking. And we like, Lord, I do it, I do it, I do it. And he like, okay, okay. And then he'll send you a test and say, not do it. And it's always going to be something you don't want to do. <laughs> Stand in the gap, people. Stop breaking the law. Pray. Fast, turn the plate down. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Lose a couple of pounds. I know I did. I know I did. I did. Still off me. <laughs> Amen. But when we talk about being with the Lord, we have to be about our Father's business. And that's what Yahshua said. If we expect blessings to come our way, we have to be more concerned with what God wants and what he don't want. We have to put ourselves on the shelf. Like Brother John said, I must, be, I must decrease so that he may increase. Amen. God bless y'all. I pray this has been something to live along and fight more through the week. Love you. God bless. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. Come on, give it up for the captain and the leader. <laughs> Y'all know I got jokes, baby. Praise God, everybody. Truly, he is worthy to be praised. How many know that every time you called on Jesus, he came to your rescue? Bishop, this is for you. All right. <laughs> Come on and put your hands together. 